Now let's take a look at the associative property and we'll start off with an example here too. If I say 1 plus 2 in parentheses like that plus 3 and remember the parentheses mean that we do what's in the parentheses first. So and we can do this in our head 1 plus 2 will be 3 and then when I add the other 3 I'll get 6. The associative property says this that this will equal this 1 plus in parentheses 2 plus 3. So over here if I evaluate the right side this 2 plus 3 gives me a 5 because I'm doing what's in the parentheses first and then I add the 1 and I get a 6. So I get a 6 either way. So it doesn't matter if I group the 1 and the 2 or the 3 and the 2. And the same thing also works for multiplication. If I say 2 times 3 times 4 that's going to be the same as 2 times 3 times 4. So it doesn't matter if I multiply the 2 and the 3 first or the 3 and the 4 first. 2 times 3 here will give me 6 and then when I multiply by 4 I get 24 so that's 24 on the left and over here 3 times 4 is 12 and when I multiply by 2 I get 24 so 24 on the right. So when we're adding or when we're multiplying the association or the grouping doesn't matter. We get the same result either way. And again we can state this concept with a general rule and I would state it like this. If A, B, and C are real numbers, just means that they're numbers on the number line. If they are real numbers, then, and you can write this in your notes, then A plus B plus C, with the A and the B in parentheses, will equal A plus parentheses B plus C. So it doesn't matter if I group the A and the B or the B and the C. The result will be the same either way. And the same thing can be stated with multiplication. A times B in parentheses times C will be the same as A times in parentheses B times C. So it doesn't matter if I group the A and the B to multiply first or the B and the C to multiply first. Now this might seem kind of simple or kind of obvious, but this really does end up being pretty useful. You can make some, cal some, some calculations simpler than they otherwise would be. For example, take a look at these. If I have 5 times 28.6 times 2 all multiplied together, those three things multiplied together, uh, this could be a little bit tricky if I started just going left to right. 5 times 28.6, that's um, kind of a bit of work to do. Uh, even if you have to pull out the calculator, you have to go find your calculator and type that in. Uh, this can be really easy if you just rearrange some things. Just reorder this. I'm going to think of this as 5 times 2 times 28.6 and I'll do the 5 times 2 first and you can do this in your head without rewriting it you can just recognize okay 5 times 2 that's easy that's going to give me a 10 and then when I multiply the 28.6 times the 10 that's just going to move the decimal point to the right and I'll end up with 286 and you can do that you can do this reordering step mentally without even writing it down and if you understand that the order doesn't matter, you can just associate the 5 with the 2 and do those first and go straight to the answer in your head faster than you could even type it in to the calculator. Not every problem works out that easily, but when it does, it's helpful to recognize that. Here's another example. 25 times 1.83 times 4. And again, if you started here trying to multiply 25 times 1.83, that's a good bit of work. But 25 times 4, in your mind, you know that that is 100. And 100 times 1.83 is going to be 183. I'll write it down, but again, you would do this mentally. 25 times 4, do those first, and then multiply by 1.83. And 25 times 4 is 100 times 1.83 is 183. And this can be fast and easy and accurate. Even done in your head. Here's another example. Uh, three and a half plus five and a third plus two and a half 
plus one and two thirds. And you look at this and you go, oh no, there's fractions. And we have to add fractions. And when we add fractions, we have to have the same denominator. And we don't even have the same denominator in all of these places. But again, this one, this particular problem, and they always don't work out this easily, but this particular problem can be made very simple by reorganizing things. I'm going to put the three and a half and the two and a half together. I'm going to say three and a half plus two and a half, and then I'll put the five and a third and the one and two thirds together. Plus five and a third plus one and two thirds. Now what does this equal? Well, remember that three and a half just means three and a half, or three plus a half. And two and a half means two plus a half. So this is three plus a half plus two plus a half. And you can do that in your head. The three plus the two is five, and the one half plus the one half is one. So this is like having five and one. So those just give me six. And then I have these pieces over here on the right. Okay, so let's think about the five and a third plus the one and two thirds. Well, five and a third is five and a third, or five plus one third. So that's five plus one third plus one plus two thirds. So let's just rearrange those. And in our mind, let's think five plus one plus one third plus two thirds. And five plus one is easy, that's six. And one third plus two thirds, hopefully you can see that that's three thirds or just one. Those fractions, in this case, those add up to one. So we have five plus one plus these two guys, which also add up to one. So that's a total of seven. Five plus one plus one is seven. So this is six plus seven for a total of 13. And again, I, I uh, spent some time explaining that and talking through that, but a lot of this, especially with a little bit of practice, you can do in your head mentally fairly quickly. And working it out that way, adding these fractions to come up to one, and adding these fractions to come up to one, and adding the numbers is not only quicker, but I would argue also more accurate than going through the work to convert those to having a common denominator. Whenever you can reduce the work required to get an answer, you also reduce the opportunity for making a mistake. So when, when you can do this, it really is helpful to do it. It's not just faster, but also more accurate. And speed and accuracy are both important. And again, the numbers don't always work out this nicely. But when you can see that they do, when you can find these cases where you have like a, a 5 and a 2 multiplying to give you a 10, or these fractions adding up to give you a, a whole number. When you can see those situations, it's helpful to take advantage of that.